very good. Uh, thank you, Wendy. And hello to everyone again. Um, you may recognize the image that's uh, before you on the screen right now. Um, and I, I'm starting here just to kind of warm our, our thinking up uh, around what what is value and, and, and how do people think about value? Well, Warren Buffett thinks about business value all the time. He seems to have developed a successful track record on developing value and recognizing value. And he says very simply, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Well, if you're listening in, you might be wondering, well, how is that of much help? Uh, let, let's, let's take this to, let's see, it just, um, there we go. So the, in slide number 11, I'm going to ask you to just pause for a moment and reflect on your own work experience, your, your business experience, about how you think about business value. And one way to, to focus in on that in a meaningful way today, I'm hopeful you'll consider the kind of questions about business value that from time to time perhaps you have a feeling that you struggle to answer. Uh, you might find yourself in a position where you're accountable for delivering business value through the execution, the successful execution of projects. So I'm wondering which questions do you uh, struggle to answer? If you take a look at slide number 12, um, in, in working with a broad spectrum of, of leaders responsible for executing strategy, delivering successful projects, delivering value, we find these five questions to be very common among project managers and others in, in organizations. And the first is around the fact that different people within the organization uh, have different perspectives about the definition of value in deciding what has value and how much. And it's even worse than that, that sometimes uh, those perspectives change over time. So I'm wondering if you've had that experience as well, where you've discovered, perhaps later than you would have liked, that your perspective on the value on the delivery of a successful delivery or project is maybe different than others' expectations. There's a lot of talk also in, que in question number two here about maximization of value. Well, just what does that mean in terms of, so how do we act? What, what do we do differently in order to maximize business value? And especially day-to-day -day decision making. If we think about what the future of a decision that you're going to make perhaps later today or later this week, uh, how's that decision going to affect the various aspects of value expected as a result of your project. And the third question, how do you know and verify or validate after a project has been executed, have they delivered the value in full? Have they de delivered any value at all? And how should we think about that? Um, when we start to get down to a more granular level in question number four, uh, often people will wonder when they have choices uh, that are compelled by a limited time, limited funding, perhaps funding is being removed from a project, or there's reconsideration of scope, which functionality is going to stay and which functionality is going to go? And that's not only considered at the beginning of projects, but don't you also find that that's considered sometimes very late in a project as we're dashing to the finish line and meeting a, a, a hard stop date for uh, delivering the uh, results of a project? And finally, in question number five, are all types of value created equal? Are there, in fact, different kinds of value? So, for example, some, some measures of value are clearly financially related. And your chief financial officer and other key business stakeholders have meaningful ways uh, to their stakeholders and, and their shareholders, perhaps, about what value means. In addition to that, there are non-financial measures of value and they often are well to be considered in order to deliver projects successfully. So the question becomes, how do we measure them in, uh, for, to form a basis for how to compare them? How do we compare apples and oranges? So as, as we consider these kind of questions and maybe you have other questions, perhaps one of these questions is of particular interest to you. Let's, let's proceed and uh, think about what other project managers have said and have been captured in a study that was published in 2016 
by the Project Management Institute in their Pulse of uh, Profession document was called Identify Benefits to Drive Business Results. And here you see captured in the cartoon bubbles uh, just a, a small selection of, of some of the comments about how project managers and senior, senior leaders in organizations think about business value. And as you kind of scan the, the, the slide here, you may find, as I did, there are at least four themes that emerged. One is um, the need for focus on value. What, why are we doing this project in the first place? What value is it expected to be delivered? How do we measure it? Okay, and what triggers the successful execution of a project? And, and the one comment that very much resonated with, with my experience in leading project teams uh, in small and large organizations is the one that's on the far right-hand side. And I'll just kind of briefly read it for you. If a team does not understand why they are working on a project, it's, it's hard to maintain the momentum to get the project completed on time and within budget. I'm wondering if, if you've experienced that as well. In your leadership of projects, it's very important for people to be able to ask, why are we doing this? So that they can offer their commitment. Today's world, we're moving, of course, more and more, perhaps you've seen this as well, we've certainly seen it at Group Atlantic, more and more from a control uh, end of the spectrum to a commitment end of the spectrum. Uh, the emergence of agile approaches to work are very much dependent on commitment of individuals to the why of a project. So we turn to slide number 14. So other research I'm hopeful you find uh, interesting. So what, what we're seeing here is that for a billion dollar business and across a range on the left hand side from a low benefits realization maturity to the right hand side of a high benefits realization maturity. Actually, I've got those reversed. Left hand side, a high benefits realization, right hand side, low benefits realization. There's a delta of $112 million in how much is wasted. So think about that. First question I would ask is, does your, measure, your, does your organization measure waste? Um, and it, does your me organization have a sense, if not a, a kind of a assessed measurement of your benefits realization maturity? Because what we see here is that where you have low benefits realization maturity, there's a much, much more waste. In fact, it's a three to one ratio. So you may not be a billion dollar business, but the ratios seem to apply. And, and uh, by the way, uh, I commend this report to you. There's a lot of other useful data in this report. We'll take a little bit more uh, look at it in a slide or two. So what does this mean? So how would we know if, as a project manager if, I'm, if my project orientation is a high benefits realization or a low benefits realization maturity? Or the, the organization in which my project works uh, is it on the high end of the scale or the low end of the scale? Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year. But if you use the coupon code LEARN to EARN, you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.